Good evening, Union Baptist Church. Welcome to this New Year's Eve special service for you. David said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. We know that 2020 has been a roller coaster of the year. You have had success and setbacks, you had ups and down. As we knock on 2021, you can be like Paul in Romans 8 and 28 when he said, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Not everything is good, but in all things, God is sovereignly sitting behind the scenes of your life and working things ultimately to bring him glory and bring you good. I want to greet everyone who's on Facebook. I want to invite you to like, share, comment, or even host a watch party. I also want to ask our live stream and our YouTube family, put something in the comments and let us know where you're watching this service from. Let's go right into this worship experience with this song, Trouble Don't Last Always.
kill the giant we have slain. Goliath, hallelujah. Good evening and welcome to our watch night service tonight at Union Baptist Church. It is good for us to be here. I tell you, 2020 has been a year. It has been a year. And all I really want to do tonight is just say thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for supporting the church this year. I want to thank our guest worshiper here tonight, uh, worship leader here tonight, Ms. Tiffany Andrews. She was on Sunday's Best Season 9, and tonight she is going to sing and lead us in worship and praise and celebrating the goodness and the grace of God. I, I, I want to thank you for your testimonies and, and thank you for your volunteering and thank you for all the ways you made something good come out of a very challenging year. Now, like all of you, I am looking forward to the reunion when Union get, gets back together. Uh, we're going to remember, we're going to rejoice, we're going to reconnect, and we're going to relaunch. But tonight, we're going to worship. Uh, we're going to worship God in song, we're going to worship God in prayer, and we're going to worship God now in our giving. You can go to the church's website, myubc.org, and make your last gift for the year 2020. Uh, you can this Saturday, make your first gift in the year 2021 with our curbside offering uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Feel free to mail in your tithes and offerings or use your church's online, uh, your bank's rather, online bill pay. And uh, we just thank you in advance for helping us to start out 2021 strong because we have a lot of good things in store and planned for this year. So we do need your support. Let us go to God in prayer right now as we thank God for every good and perfect gift. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we magnify your holy name. We know that it is because of you that we have something to give. And so we pray, dear God, that we might share what we have so that all might have what they need. Continue to keep us, God, in your loving care as we cross the threshold from the year 2020 into the year 2021. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
says, write the vision, make it plain, that they may run. Yeah. 
keeping your word to us now. You never failed us. You never left us alone. For never lying to me, Jesus, my God. You're not a man that you should lie. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. You're not a man that you should lie. Hey, hey. You're not a man that you should lie. Glory to God. You keep your promises. Hey, hey. You're a promise keeping God. Hallelujah. You're a promise keeping God. You're a promise keeper. Hey. the face that sees the invisible it expects the incredible it receives the impossible oh, faith oh my that can conquer in anything. Oh, I have the faith that sees the invisible expand. Oh, 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 faith that can conquer anything. Faith, I pray you receive this today, that uproots my problem. Faith 
to no God can stop them without a doubt. Faith to envision my freedom. I have problems faith to know God can solve them faith you gotta see it before you see it to envision my
to believe God that he's going to do what he said. Oh, no. Faith. Oh, that can conquer.
praise for another opportunity uh, to be in this place, to be where we are, to be in the land of the living. As we get ready to cross the threshold into a new year, I want to direct your attention to a passage of scripture that, that uh, most of us know uh, and, and will begin reciting even as we hear them. It's the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23. I am reading from the New International Version. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you pray with me? Oh God, our gracious Father, we thank you now for your strength and your power. We ask, oh God, that you would stand up in your servant and allow him to hide himself behind the cross that your people might see less of him and more of you because God we know and we believe that you and you alone are our rock and our redeemer and so we ask you God that the harvest would be uh, that the harvest would be plentiful tonight in the name of Jesus we pray amen for just a little while I want to talk from the subject I'm ready for 2021 I am ready for 2021. Now let's be honest, this is the night that a lot of people have been waiting for, the end of 2020. You can hardly wait for 2020 to fade into the background and for 2021 to finally appear on your calendar. This year has not been all bad, but it certainly has not been all good either. I, I really don't have to explain to you how radically different this year has been compared to what we expected last year this time. Even the number 2020 made as many people think that we were on the edge of something extraordinarily good. As it turned out, the coronavirus, police brutality, and a wild economy did not care about our plans, our ideas, or our aspirations for the future. 2020 did not care that we had planned to start a business. 2020 did not care or pay attention to our our plans to make personal or professional change. 2020 was not concerned that it was our senior year, our wedding year, our first prom, our milestone birthday, or our last year on the job we had worked for years and years. This year came and did whatever it wanted without our permission or approval. What we thought was guaranteed turned out to be much different than we expected. The Bible often talks about how suddenly life can change. The book of James says that we are foolish to boast about the future. It says, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. You don't even know what is going to happen tomorrow. What we do know about this year is that so much of what happened actually exposed truths that needed ours and the world's full attention. Had it not been for the shutdowns because of COVID-19, the deaths of Breonna Taylor and Amon Aubrey and George Floyd would have been one maybe two night news stories. Individual communities would have mourned and moved on. A few activists would have cried out. Those three murders, just those alone, would have been nothing more than tragic footnotes in a long list of tragic footnotes. But the world had time at home in front of the television and time to stay up, uh, up to the minute with news reports about the excruciating eight minutes and 46 seconds of a grown man crying out for his mother. People in the U.S. and around the globe saw and heard enough pain and suffering to demand justice that has been long denied to ordinary people that just want to be treated like full human beings. We never saw this year coming. I, I know for a fact that 
There was nothing in my watch night sermon from 2019 that predicted a global pandemic or an unprecedented presidential election in which uh, my home state of Georgia would flip from red to blue. In, in Georgia, you remember the icons of, of the Confederate Army are actually carved in to a side, to the side of a stone mountain. Now, this year has made people question much of what they previously assumed, and that is understandable. You, you even have some teachers and parents and students uh, be, who are questioning the system we use for education in our country universities have questions about how they will provide a, a college education to students in the future. We have questions about how to trust the American voter that talks about being patriotic on the one hand and then votes for someone that divides the country on the other hand. Working from home, staying at home, being quarantined at home has been romantic for some and restful for some and it's been stressful and emotionally taxing for others and because of our questions it is hard to know what or who we can count on in these days. It's difficult to know what's reliable and what's not reliable. Loved ones have died. Finances have been stretched. Jobs are on hold. Plans for the short term and even some for the long term feel uncertain. There are prayers we have prayed that feel like they're being held up in a cosmic traffic jam and now they might be completely ignored. We want to be optimistic about 2021, but it's not easy to do from where we stand right now. What's a person of faith to do when you're standing on the edge of a year like 2020, looking ahead into a year that is full of unknowns like 2021? One of the things that we've got to do and one of the things we've had to do this year is to stop relying on that which is unreliable. <laughs> In the book of Isaiah, the Lord asks why Israel worships idols made of wood. A, a carpenter cuts down trees and with some of the wood he makes a fire. With the rest of the wood he carves a, a, a god and then worships those gods. And the Lord says, have you considered the fact that the same wood used to make your god was used to make a fire? So if your god can be put in a fire and burn, how reliable is your god? I'm trying to tell somebody, stop relying on that which is unreliable. Hopefully 2020 taught us what is and is not worth relying on. My prayer is that at some point in this year, you got rid of some unreliable stuff. You got rid of some things you did not need. I hope we did not just go through this entire year, all 365 days, all this time we spent in the pandemic, and you didn't take the time to let go of something that you don't need to get focused a little bit better and ready for the next season that is sure to come in your life. Most of us have had time and opportunity. I I hope that you cleared up something and cleaned out something. I hope that you purged some of the clutter, the physical clutter, the mental clutter, the spiritual clutter. 2020 was your year to reevaluate what is reliable and what is not reliable. The reality is, church, that there are some people that we miss seeing this year. But let me tell you this. There are some people, if you're honest, that you don't miss seeing at all. There's some clothes you can't wear to wear, wait to wear again and there's some clothes that you will never wear again there's some places you can't wait to go again but there are some places that you will never return to there's some meetings you, you can't wait to get back to and some you are so glad you never have to have again the fact of the matter is this year was tailor made to teach us not to rely on that which is not reliable every day we get up is about trusting God the key to hope is about trusting God. Every corner we can't see around calls us to trust in God. Every crisis we are facing uh, calls us to exercise greater trust in God. Therefore, tonight I'm not going to make empty promises to you about 2021. I'm not 
going to fill your head with ideas that everything is going to get better in the next 30 days. Some things will improve and some things will not. But here's what I am going to do. Here is what I can say. That while I don't know everything about your future, there are some guarantees that make us ready for the next year. Let me tell you what I don't know. I don't know if you will get married. I don't know if you'll get unmarried. I don't know if the business is finally going to take off. I don't know if you'll be healed on this side or in the presence of God. But there are some things I do know for sure that make me ready for 2021. And look at the first verse of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. To put that in everyday words, God cares for you. This is a fact that gets lost in the chaos and confusion of life. This truth sometimes gets buried under the dust and of worry and anxiety. It's a promise that is overlooked by preachers and when we want to be deep and interesting instead of telling you how faithful God is. But David offers one of the most encouraging affirmations for the new year. It's a simple affirmation that holds up in a pandemic. It won't be crushed by a crisis. It will withstand being single it's resilient to a rocky relationship it is good in the good times and it works in the bad times the Lord is my shepherd I know that Psalm 23 is so popular that you already know the rest of the verse just listening to the first five words but sit with these five words for just a minute and think about what it means that the Lord is your shepherd we often read this at funerals and this year might feel like one long funeral for somebody but the spiritual benefit of these words is not just for when we're dealing with death but also when we're confronted with the realities of life the Lord is my shepherd that's a declaration that God cares that's a statement of God's concern and that's why I'm ready for the next year you see Psalm 23 falls into what we call the category of the Psalms of trust like Psalm Psalm 4 and Psalm 11 and Psalm 27 and Psalm 131 to name a few but the commonality of the Psalms of trust is that uh, they originate out of a crisis instead of crying out to God in despair uh, the Psalms of trust cry out to God with confidence the Lord is my shepherd in other words there's a catastrophe but God cares there, there's misfortune but God cares there's a burden but God cares that there's desperation but God cares the Lord is my shepherd without a shepherd a sheep is hopeless and helpless. Only the shepherd is going to care that the sheep has green grass to graze on daily. Only the shepherd is going to stay up late and watch out for wolves trying to attack and kill the sheep. Only the shepherd is going to inspect the sheep for biting insects. Without a doubt, we've got a shepherd that cares for the sheep. And in these unpredictable and unprecedented times, let me issue this promise to you church one thing that you can count on in the year 2021 and the next few months and in this present moment right now is that God is looking out for you and let me tell you this it's not just that God cares for you it's that God's care is comprehensive we sometimes put God in such a small box that we think God only cares about some of the parts of our life we act like God cares that we come to church and the rest of our life is up to us to figure out on our own. That's not the case because the psalm is clear that God's care is comprehensive. It says the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing. In the King James Version I shall not want. David knew that a shepherd's care for the sheep is comprehensive enough to make sure that the sheep can lie down in a green pasture. But David is not really talking about
about sheep and shepherds. David is talking about himself and his God. He knew that the Lord cared that he was not overwhelmed by the demands of life. So the Lord said, I'll let you lie down in green pastures. I'll lead you beside quiet waters and I will refresh your soul. Saying that he lacks nothing is not meant to be an endorsement of unbridled material excess. It's not a rubber stamp uh, for the greed of the prosperity gospel. I think this means that, that God's care extends to every area, every dimension, every need, every crevice, every corner of our humanity that's connected to a full, meaningful life of purpose and joy. Let me translate that for you. God cares about your prayers and your paycheck. God cares about your faith and your friendships. God cares about your worship and your work situations. God cares about your spiritual growth and your physical and mental well-being. Nothing in this life is out of bounds for God's comprehensive, all-inclusive care. Not your osteoarthritis, not your child's math class, and not your emotional well-being, not your employment or unemployment, not your house note, not your rent. All of these realities are under the care of our God who is our shepherd. Abraham's not your shepherd. The president is not your shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. It's like David is boasting like a new couple on a wedding day. They each one is looking at the other and saying, I can't believe that I get to be with you and I can't believe that I belong to you. That's how David is thinking. He's overwhelmed by the promise that his shepherd is none other than the creator of the heavens and the earth. The God who spoke over nothing and created everything. The deliverer that got Daniel out of lion's dens. The engineer that, that designed a cruise ship for Noah. The caterer that brought a food to Elijah in the wilderness. And for us, Jesus is the good shepherd who laid down his life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He is our shepherd who cares comprehensively for us. That's why I'm ready for the new year. But I'll give you a second guarantee if that didn't work enough for you. And that is that you, you've got this promise in the text. That is that God is going with you. you. You've got a companion that God's going with you. We can pick it up from what David says in the next few verses. The shepherd leads me beside quiet waters. The Lord guides me along the right paths. Even though I walk through the valley of, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. You see the promise of God going with you it is real and necessary in the times uh, that we live in now. It, it's a tragic truth, church, that people try and try and try to get through without having a close companion. They, they try to get through some of the hardest times of life without having a close companion. And I'm not talking about right now whether you're married or single. That's not uh, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a close companion. You can be surrounded by people and still not have a companion. You can be on the team and still not feel included and you don't have any companions. But David learned in his years as a shepherd how dangerous it was to leave your sheep alone. Wolves waited to kill them and steal them. Uh, snakes uh, were in the thickets and, and, and they might uh, be uh, able to strike the sheep on its heel. Uh, the shepherd stayed near the sheep uh, to make sure that the the sheep had somebody with them who could help them. He was their companion. When they got thirsty, uh, the shepherd was there to find calm, still uh, pools of water. When, when they needed rest, the shepherd was there to lovingly give them uh, a break in the green pastures. In the face of danger, the shepherd used his weapons to defend the sheep. God is our companion. We need God to go with us in this life. We may not think that we need a companion when we're lying in a green pasture when we're sitting beside a still water or we're on the right path but what about when we're walking through the darkest valleys what about when we've got evil all around us what about when enemies get too close for comfort that's when we need to know that God is going with us and everywhere we go see my faith is not dependent on spending all of my days in the comfort of a green pasture. 
and, and none of the time in some dark valleys. I, I don't believe that I can always avoid coming into contact with evil. I, I don't think that my devotion to God is going to keep me from confronting an enemy or two in my life. All of these are real possibilities in the new year, but I'll give thanks in advance for the certainty that in all of the vicissitudes of life, in, in the ups and the downs, in, in the good and the bad, in the known and the unknown, I've got a companion. The Lord is with me. That's why I'm ready for another year. That's why I feel prepared for what's around the corner. In fact, this reminds me of a scene from an old Disney movie. Uh, a bear cub was walking uh, alone through the woods. He's unaware that there's a mountain lion stalking him, waiting to pounce on this defenseless animal. And when the cub noticed the mountain lion stalking him and coming closer, he did what he had seen his mother do many times before. He stood up on his back legs and, and tried to roar to intimidate the mountain lion, but the mountain lion was a full-grown adult male he was not afraid of that tiny bear cub the baby bear cub was not big enough not strong enough not fast enough uh, to get away or or to defeat the mountain lion and so the predator kept on coming in uh, ready to pounce on this bear cub but then all of a sudden the mountain lion tucked his tail froze in his tracks and then turned and went the other direction and the cub was proud of himself he thought that the mountain lion ran away because he had stood up for himself but but he didn't know until he turned around that behind him his mother had shown up and she was standing on her hind legs seven feet tall sharp claws raised and ready for the fight and the cub was all right because his uh, guardian was with him and something tells me that's how we need to approach the year 2021 there might be some mountain lions waiting on us but I thank God that I'm not alone I've got the Lord standing with me I've got the Lord as my companion and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because my God is with me and he's with you with you for your surgery and with you when you're worried and with you when friends fail and with you when children are sick and with you if loved ones die He's with us when we have joy and with us when we have trouble. God cares about you and God is going with you because he's your companion. But you know what I really like about this psalm is how honest David is. The writer is not expecting to be spared from every inconvenience or difficulty. He knows that even though the Lord is his shepherd, there will be adversities to overcome. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what's important is the fact that, that when it gets dark, sometimes uh, he understands that, that he can't stop believing that God is his shepherd. There is going to be evil coming against you, but he's confident that the shepherd is going to guide him. Uh, you see, I know that we elected a new president and everybody, uh, many people are, are resting and, and satisfied, but please do not think that elections eliminate evil. I, I'm not suggesting that either party is evil. I'm only saying that 2021 is going to bring a new set of challenges and even some of the same old challenges. Some of the folk that were angry in 2020 will still be angry in 2020. 2021. Some of the injustices of 2020 will spill over into 2021. So here's what you need to know about the future. God guarantees that God can keep you no matter what happens to you. You see, you've got to be careful with some of the guarantees for some of the products that you buy out there because you'll get some guarantees that come with limitations and exclusions. The warranty on your car covers everything except you know what. The warranty on that new refrigerator covers everything except this, that, and the third. And doesn't it seem like when something goes wrong with your car or your refrigerator, that the exception is where the problem is. But what I know from Psalm 23 is that God promises to keep you no matter what happens to you. 
even though there will be dark valleys, even though there will be evil, the Lord has the ability and the wisdom to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Just look at the year we're leaving behind. As hard as 2020 has been, can we not say that it hasn't been all bad all of the time? We've seen grief, but we have also caught a glimpse of the goodness of God. We may have struggled, but we've also felt the strength that God has provided. We've been weary, but also there's been a way that the Lord has filled us with his joy. I'm trying to tell somebody, I don't know where you are at the end of the year 2020. And I don't know what anxieties you have as you peer over into the year 2021. But I am convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that God can keep you no matter what happens to you. The Bible says that God can prepare a table before you even when there are enemies all around you. This year has proven that you can be in the midst of something bad and God can still do something good. We can be going through something hard and God can surprise us with a reason to say thank you. You see, God has kept you. So you ought to rejoice tonight if your testimony about 2020 is that God prepared a table when you were in trouble. Somehow God kept a promise to keep you. I'm trying to say that quarantine gave you some quality time. Isolation helped you examine yourself. Staying indoors made you stay on your knees. Global interruption gave you time to think about your future. God has been keeping you. Beloved, I wish I had a crystal ball where I could tell you what was going to happen in the next year. I wish I could predict what the next season was going to be. I can't do it tonight, but here's what I can do. I can tell you to look up because God will anoint your head with oil until your cup overflows. I can tell you to look down because God has a way of making a table for you in the presence of your enemies. But I can tell you to look behind you. I know you don't want to look back to the year 2020. But if you look back to November and October, if you look back to September and to August, if you look back to July and June, if you look back to May and April, to March and February, all the way back to January 2020, you'll be able to open your eyes and see that every step of the way behind you on one side was goodness and on the other side was mercy and they've been following you all of the days God's been walking with you he followed you through this year so I've got no doubt that he'll go with me to the next year that's why I'm ready I'm ready to serve I'm ready to wait on the Lord I'm ready to worship my God I'm ready to be transformed I'm ready for justice ready to be made new ready to be his disciple and I'm ready to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living somebody ought to say yeah I made it through I made it out and I made it over and whatever is in front of me I know my God is already there he's a good shepherd he's a good friend and he will never leave you nor will he forsake you I'm ready I'm ready for a brand new year and I hope that you are because whatever whatever comes our way we can trust that God cares we can trust that God's going with us and we can trust that God will be able to handle everything that happens to us 
If you haven't made a decision to follow Christ this year and you're watching us tonight, I don't think it's an accident or a coincidence. This is another opportunity for you to say yes to God, to get connected to the church. And our prayer line is open right now. Just give us a call at 855-PRAY-UBC. 855-PRAY-UBC. Our ministers are standing by and we would love to have prayer with you and receive you as a candidate for baptism or on your own Christian experience. But let's start the new year off right with God in the church, walking by faith. to withhold anything from God going into this year and so I want to invite you wherever you are tonight if you can connect hands with the people in your household you can form a prayer circle right in your living room you can reach your hand out toward the television monitor and connect with us right here but let's go to God in prayer as we enter into this this new year Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, first we want to say thank you for keeping us. We, we know we did not get through the last 12 months, the last 365 days on our own. You have been walking with us every step of the way. And so God, we first acknowledge you as our sustainer, our keeper, and, and our guide. We thank you for that, dear God. We're also thankful tonight for the opportunity we have as we cross into this new year we know that many people have had some very challenging and trying times this year they've lost loved ones they've lost friends they've lost co-workers oh God and so we pray for them that that you would hold them in their grief that you would give them oh God a comfort that that only you can give and strengthen them oh God to not get weary but to keep on living and trusting in you we pray for students who are caught betwixt and between and some wondering whether they will go back to school and some feeling like this year has been somehow diminished in some way. We pray, God, that they would recognize that 
the best thing they can do is learn how to be resilient, learn how to overcome because this won't be the first challenge that they face in their lifetimes. Build them up, oh God. Give them the mental and spiritual health and well-being that they need to make it to the other side. Then God, for all of us, as we take this journey into the unknown, we thank you for the opportunity. We pray that you would keep us anchored in your word and filled with your Holy Spirit. Help us to trust you a little more this year than we did last year. Help us to serve you a little bit more, to care more about other people and to be more compassionate in our dealings with our fellow human beings. And God, when we get to the end of 2021, if by your grace we are still here, we will meet you right back in the house of God to lift our hands with praise and thanksgiving, knowing that every good and every perfect gift comes from above. Forgive us of our sins. Give us a clean slate, O oh God. We thank you, we bless you, and we count it already done. In the marvelous, matchless, and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, who is your Son and our Savior, all of us said, Amen and Amen. Tell somebody, Happy New Year. Text them, call them. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hang in there because we're ready. We're ready for the new year. To God be the glory for the great things he has done.